Hi, boys and girls. Um, this is Pearson. I'm a first grade teacher at Barack Obama Elementary. I am so excited to be here today to teach with you and learn with you. Today, we're going to do a reading lesson and we're going on a little field trip, okay? Is that okay with you? Um, we're actually in my backyard and it's such a pretty day and there's a lot to see and learn about in a backyard. So I thought this would be a good place to do our lesson. Do you want me to show you a couple of things before we begin? Okay, boys and girls, I'm gonna show you some things in my garden. I'm gonna start by showing you some of the edible things. Edible is a word that means that you can eat it. So I have some things in my garden that I can eat with my family. Here I have some lettuces and you can eat the leaves, the leaves of this lettuces um they're great for like salads and things like that and then over here i have some mint and mint is an herb that you can eat and you can use it to flavor um different things and again that's edible and then up here i have a strawberry plant it doesn't have any strawberries on it yet but hopefully it will later in the summer this is another herb it's called a chive and chives taste like onion you can use those when you cook over here, this is like my little vegetable garden, and everything in here is edible. I have kale, this is kale, I have um, spinach, and lettuces, I have two tomato plants, so I have a lot of different um, vegetables. I have some spicy peppers growing. This is an, an herb that's called basil, so I can use that when I'm cooking and all of these things are edible which means I can eat them another part of my garden I like to call this part my butterfly garden because um, these plants that are over here are all loved by animals that are pollinators a pollinator is an animal that um, likes pollen they spread pollen from plant to plant, which is good for plants to grow, and it's also good for the pollinator. So that could be a bee or a butterfly, a hummingbird. Those are all different examples of pollinators. And then on this side of my garden, I have, see this little guy? This is a fig tree. So it will grow figs on it, and a fig is a type of fruit that you can eat. So that will be edible. And then growing over there, that is a blackberry bush, which will grow blackberries that I can eat with my family. And these are just some flowers. These are called peonies. You can see, I have a little picture of what it's gonna look like. Isn't that a pretty flower? So that's gonna be pretty once it blooms. And then right here I have, do you know what this is called? This is a flower. I'll show you that. It's, it's called a rose. So I have a rose bush. So that's my garden. I hope you liked it. Okay, let's sit down and do our reading lesson now. Um, because we're outside, you might hear some birds. You might hear people driving by. So, I don't know. That could be part of the fun, I guess. All right, I'm going to share my screen with you. All right, so we're gonna start by reading today's I can statements. I have two I can statements for you. The first one says, I can ask and answer questions using the words who, what, when, where, why, and how when reading a nonfiction book. If you watched my lessons last week, then you'll remember this and this will be a good practice and review for you. So the other I can statement says, I can ask and answer questions before and during a book. So we'll ask some questions before we read, we'll ask some more questions while we're reading, and all of our questions are gonna start with one of these words. We've got six words here, who, when, how, why, what, and where. Do you remember when you need to ask and answer questions? Good job. Before you read, during your reading and after your reading. Do you remember why you need to ask and answer questions? Use this picture to 
you know, give yourself a little hint. So yes, you ask questions because it will make you a very strong reader. Your workout, or you're gonna give your brain a little workout, make it super strong. You're gonna understand the book more deeply and really get what the message is and get the facts from the book when you ask questions. You will really be able to focus on the book more because a lot of times, you know, your brain gets um, distracted or maybe you're rushing a little bit and you're not really focusing but when you stop and ask questions you are um, able to really think about the book more. Most of the time when you ask a question the answer will be inside the book so it's like giving yourself a little quiz. All right this is one of this is a little hand that I made last week. I call it the 5W hand and maybe you made one at home. I hope you did because it's a really great tool to help you remember to ask and answer questions and to use these words, these six words that I was just talking about. Can you read them with me? Who, when, where, what, why, and little baby how. So if you haven't made one of these already, please make one, keep it in your room or wherever you like to read so that you can remember to use these words while you're reading nonfiction books. Here's the book we're going to be reading today. Dig in, learn about dirt. The author is Pamela Hall. So the reason that I brought you outside today is so you could see some of my dirt. <laughs> All of my plants in my garden are growing in dirt. So here's another one right here. This is one of my indoor plants. But I brought it outside to give it some sunshine today. And inside this pot is dirt. So this book is a nonfiction book, which means it's filled with real facts. You're going to be learning information about dirt today. Do you already know something about dirt? Can you tell me? What do you already know? Hmm. So maybe you learned about dirt in school. Maybe you have a garden in your backyard and you've used, used it to um, plant some things. And so you know a little bit about dirt. Before we read, we are gonna ask some questions. So you're gonna need to get a graphic organizer. You can either print out a graphic organizer from online, and it looks just like this. It's going to be underneath the lesson, or you can make a graphic organizer at home with a piece of paper. It doesn't matter which one you use, but you need to use one of them today. So I'm going to let you choose. If you need to pause the video to get your graphic organizer, go ahead and pause it and then push play once you have it. Okay, welcome back. So if you push play and you're listening to this part of the video, that means you have a graphic organizer. Um, and so you are ready to ask some questions before we read. We are going to look at our front cover of our book and we're going to look at the table of contents and the, that will be a way that we can think of some good questions to ask before we read. So here's the front cover. I see some dirt. I see some grass. I even see the words dig in have like dirt behind them. That's interesting. On my table of contents, I can see the different chapters in the book. We're going to be reading the first three chapters today. You can also see the pages where you can find each chapter. So, chapter, <clears throat> excuse me, chapter one is called delightful dirt. Chapter two is, where's dirt? Oh my gosh, you guys, chapter two is actually a question. Where is dirt? You hear the word where. So where is dirt? That would be a really good question to add to your graphic organizer under where it says and write where is dirt on your graphic organizer. That would be a really good idea. And then chapter three is called Sand, Silt, and Clay. And that's gonna be on page eight. So let's look at some of the questions I wrote. And 
you can compare them to some of the questions you wrote and you can see if you are do you have some of the same questions as me <clears throat> okay so if you need to if you need a minute to write some more questions on your graphic organizer I want you to have at least two so if you want to pause the video to come up with one or two questions, you can, and then you can push play after you have your questions, and then we'll compare to see if you have any of the questions that I have. All right, you ready to see my questions? My first question says, what is dirt? What is it? You can see I started my question with the word what, because we're using those W words today. My second question is, where, where is dirt? I use the word where. My next question says, what are sand, silt, and clay? So I used um, the information when on the graphic organizer, I'm sorry, on the table of contents for chapter three, it said sand, silt, and clay. And so I wanna know a little bit more, more about what those three things are. My next question is, says, why is dirt important? So I wanna know, what is the big deal with dirt? Why is it so important? And then I have, how is dirt made? So I wanna know, how is dirt made? So we're gonna read our book now and see if we can answer any of those questions. And then we'll try to come up with some more questions while we're reading. Delightful dirt. So this is the, our first chapter. Dig in, plant in it, lift it, sift it through your fingers, spongy, sandy, or sticky. It's all delightful dirt. And the caption here says, the dirt is delightful to play in. So can you think of a question that you could add to your graphic organizer? Do you have any questions after reading this page? see what I put. Mine says, who can use soil? Who can use soil? So that was the, the question that I came up with while I was reading that page. All right, next page, page six. This chapter is called Where where is dirt? That was one of the questions that we came up with before we read the book. So let's see if we can find the answer to that. Soil is another word for dirt. Soil covers most of Earth's land. Sometimes soil is easy to see, but soil is also under sidewalks and roads. It swirls in lakes and streams. It blows in the wind. So we can see dirt all around us most of the time, but sometimes it's there and it's just hiding under things like streets and lakes. Even though we can't see it, it's gonna be there still. The word soil is boldface, which means it's an important vocabulary word, and it's gonna be located in the, tape, in the glossary in the back of the book. So it'll tell you what that word means if you look in the glossary. So let's, let's look in the glossary and see if we can find the word soil and then we can learn a little bit more about it. We can learn the definition. This is our glossary. It's on page 24 at the very back of the book. And if we look here, we can find the word soil. It says, soil is the word scientists use for dirt. So soil and dirt mean the same thing. Just dirt is like a word that kind of everyone uses and soil is a more like scientific word that scientists use. That doesn't mean that you can't use it even though you're not a scientist. You can still use the word soil. Soil covers most of Earth's land. So on land, you are going to find soil. And now we know what the definition of soil is. Let's go back to our page and let's read the captions to describe what we're seeing in each picture. The first caption says, we plant gardens in soil. And the next question, or I'm sorry, the next caption says, soil at the bottom of a lake looks different from soil in a garden. So look at this soil here at the bottom of a lake and look at the soil here in the garden. Do they look the same or do they look different? 
Mm -hmm. They look different. They're, they definitely um, are a different color, that's for sure. So here, um, on page, my page six question was, why are our gardens planted in soil? So why do we use soil to plant gardens and not other things? Okay, next chapter says sand, silt, and clay. Scoop up some dirt. Does it feel dry and grainy? That could be sand. So sand is dry and grainy. Does it feel powdery or slippery? That could be silt. Is it sticky? That could be clay. Together, sand, silt, and clay make up most of soil. Hmm, so that was one of my questions. Before we read, I had a question about sand, silt, and clay, and here I can see the answer. So we'll remember that and we'll have to go back and add that to our graphic organizer. This is how grains of sand, silt, and clay would look under a microscope. Imagine how tiny a single grain of sand is. Silt and clay grains are even smaller. So maybe you've been to the beach Maybe you've seen sand and you know how tiny it is. When you look at it under a microscope, which is a tool that scientists use um, to make things look a lot bigger, the sand is gonna look like this. So it looks very like jagged and rough around the edges. Even though when you touch it in your hand, it might feel really smooth. If you look at it, look at it really close up, it's actually gonna look kind of jagged. This is how big sand would look, but look how much smaller the silt and the clay is than the sand. So that's pretty incredible to think about, but sand is a lot bigger than these other two types of soil. Pretty interesting. All right, let's go back to some of the questions that I had before we were reading. Um, so here's one, what are sand, silt, and clay? So in the story, it says here that Sand is dry and grainy, silt is powdery and slippery, and clay is sticky, but they are things that make up soil. So soil is not just one thing. Soil is made out of like all three of those things. So I'm going to say on my graphic organizer, sand, sand, silt, and clay make up soil. Okay. Did we have any other answers to these questions? It says, um, what is dirt? Where is dirt? Ooh, where was dirt? Do you remember the answer to that question where dirt is? It's all over the earth, right? It's all over the land. So dirt is all it, or we can say dirt covers most of our earth and it was all over the land. So we have a lot of answers to our questions. What is dirt? What is dirt? Do we need to go back and look? We can always do that. That's what good readers do. Good readers always go back. So soil. So dirt is soil. That could be a good answer to our question. And we could always go back and add more to it later. Dirt is soil. If we get more information um, later on in the book, we can always go back to these questions and add more detail. But that's a good place to start for now. Okay. So we're going to stop reading the book for today. We reread the first three chapters. We asked questions before we read, and we asked questions while we were reading. And then after we read the three chapters, we went back and we looked at the questions again. We answered some of the questions. And remember, that's what good readers do. It makes us stronger. It makes us really understand what we've read. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the beginning of the, our book. I, I learned some things about soil. Did you learn some things about soil? So we're going to come back tomorrow. We're going to finish reading the book. Um, and we're going to learn more about soil. 
So maybe if it's a nice day, maybe we'll have another field trip lesson. We'll see. Okay. Um, I had a really fun time. I hope you enjoyed everything and I will see you again tomorrow. Bye guys. Take care.